But like, so for instance, for Mr. Girl, how do you manage to be cordial with people who came for your career? Um, yeah, you might be a f***ing lunatic. I don't actually know, but who knows? We'll find out in a bit or you'll kill me or you'll be chill. They were trying to be a good friend to you, but now they're between you and another friend and fundamentally they're like more loyal to the, f the former friend than you. Can you explain your tweet? What do you mean males and porn is like Jewish conspiracies for women? Because women will blame everything on porn addiction. Every single problem they have is, is porn addiction from men. <laughs> this is wild. That's like, it's just their, it's their Jewish 9-11. Lav lying about you. Lav? Okay, Was I'll your do that relationship for you, baby. owned, uh, opened for your husband owned? to f*** Destiny? Or is it for you? Yes. Destiny. For my husband to f That's Destiny. Wild. I yeah. He only suck dudes. Dick. Aren't we? Isn't it kind of obvious that she's joking here? Or well, yeah, I mean, he was begging to suck Connor's for like a while. I was like, finally, oh, like, yeah, I guess. He opened it to, so he could suck his cock. Yeah, and it was actually the first time I'd ever seen anyone like. I, it's it? the first time I'd ever seen anyone do anything gay in front of me. It was pretty crazy. Did you watch, why improv. did you watch it? He's not bad at improv. I'll tell you. Uh, why did I watch it? Why did you watch him suck your boy? I'll do anything once. I don't know. I was curious. Oh, dude, were you into it? Was it cool? You know yeah. what? Lav's not joking, and this did happen, and it was awesome, okay? Yeah. We had a huge old MMF threesome. It's one of the peak sexual experiences of my life. Lav was there screaming, humiliating things at me the entire time. Besides the recent divorce memes, what was the longest bout of emotional turmoil you had due to girl problems? Um, I don't know. I don't like to give advice based on how I personally deal with uh, grief or bad feelings or I don't know what the fuck, whatever uh, challenging feelings. I don't know if my experience is typical or if for some reasons it's highly atypical, but um, I find for myself, that as long as I'm staying busy and moving forward, that I usually get over things like very, 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 very quickly. Um, it's pretty rare that I'm like upset about something for more than a few days or more than a week, I guess. Usually I just like keep on rolling. Um, however, um, one thing I would say though, is you can do that in a really unhealthy way and you can do that in a really healthy way, <laughs> I think. Um, because some people will just keep on rolling and they'll accumulate a whole bunch of baggage and never actually like figure anything out or solve any problems or think about anything. They'll just like collect all this trauma and they'll just keep pushing themselves until they have a major f breakdown. Um, I think that it's important to Usually, if I have an event that goes really poorly in my life, uh, it could be a debate that goes bad, it could be a friendship that goes bad, it could be a relationship that goes bad, it could be a mom f***ing event that goes bad. Uh, usually, I'll spend some amount of time, I'll sit down, I might even break out my notepad, and I'll just start writing things in terms of like what went wrong. Um, like, when I say what went wrong, what I mean is, what are what is an outcome I would have liked to have had that didn't happen, and then what outcome did have happen, and then I would look at like, well, how did I contribute to the bad outcome, and what other contributing factors were there to the bad outcome, and then what was in my control, and then what could I have reasonably foresaw and changed in terms of my behavior approaching this particular thing. Um, I think I don't know if it's worth it to go into all of this, but like, I, I think every single one of these steps I think is really, really, really important when you do retrospectives on bad events in your life because if you don't do this process, I think you can start to accumulate a bunch of baggage and just you're just kind of like setting yourself on a, on a road to be fucked forever, but yeah. Seems like people have this really strong feeling of ownership over their partner when they are in a relationship Yeah, Adam 22 being chastised for not controlling his girl. Um, I don't know. <clears throat> I hope you appreciate how superhuman your emotional regulation seems like to many on the outside. I'd kill someone to be able to bounce back like you do. Yeah, I think some of it is probably unhealthy. I think a lot of it is healthy. Um, uh, yeah, it really depends. You have to... Um, Uh, fuck, I don't like, I used to prescribe really hardcore based on my personal experiences, but I don't know how many of them are atypical, so I don't like to, um, yeah. When writing down what you did wrong to contribute to the bad, how do you keep yourself in check insofar as taking responsibility for that? Um, ugh. 
Okay, we'll do this. Uh, okay, if something is in life, okay, usually we'll try to evaluate the actual outcome versus the hopeful outcome. Maybe there are multiple ones, okay? Um, when you're looking at what actually happened um, versus what did happen, uh, then I'll try to think of like, um, what would it be? It would be how much did I contribute to the situation versus how much was externally driven, meaning outside of my control or outside of my, well, these words are important. I'm sorry, hold on. Reasonably outside of my control. Um, <clears throat> how much could I have reasonably foresaw to avoid said situation or effect a different outcome. Uh, and then four is uh, permanent behavior modification going forward. Um, I think these are the steps that I try to take if um, something happens. Uh, I think you should probably go through, I think that every single person I think should probably, I don't have these like formalized, sometimes there might be five steps or three, or I might just lose them, but like, so I think some type of process like this, I think you should always go through every single time um, you, you have like a bad scenario, I think. Uh, we could look at like, for instance, like Lav and Mr. Girl. Uh, or actually, I could look at the last situation. We can do this. Um, so the actual outcome. Uh, obviously, she teamed up with Mr. Girl to write... Um, a big expose article on me to try to out me as a, some kind of sexual abuser. Obviously not good. Um, hopeful outcome uh, obviously would have been remain friends and then possible acceptable outcomes would be um, cordial stream relationship. So like somebody that would pop on stream or be like a business colleague or something, right? Um... I think and after uh, after this, uh, one of the things that I tried to uh, think about is how much did I contribute to the situation versus how much was externally driven, meaning reasonably outside of my control. So at least insofar as lab, I would try to think, well, what are things that I did to contribute to the situation, uh, to the situation, right? So I called her a bitch. That was a big one. Um, we hooked up. But I mean, that maybe contributed to some extent. Um, Gave her perms to join the stream. I guess these were things that happened. Um, yeah, I would say like these are things that maybe I did. Uh, maybe external things might be, um, these would be, uh, external things might be community response um, evil whispers, so other people talking shit about me to her, namely Mr. Girl. Um, <clears throat> external community responses, so other people that see things on Twitter and everything. Um, her own uh, reactions to other people uh, fighting with her. Um, yeah, maybe I would like leave it at this, right? <clears throat> Uh, so then the third one is, um, how could I reasonably foresaw to avoid such situation or effect a different outcome? Um, wait, hold on. I should explain these more. For, on the first one, so evaluate the actual outcome versus the hopeful outcomes. I think when you're evaluating outcomes, it's important to one, have like a realistic thing of like, okay, what was the actual outcome of the situation? When you're looking at other outcomes, you can look for a hopeful outcome. There's not always, or there's very rarely there are ever like two outcomes though, right? There could be uh, other acceptable outcomes as well. So for instance, maybe you uh, go to propose to somebody and you're thinking, well, they could say yes, they could say no. That's not actually the only two outcomes. They could say yes, uh, or they could say no, but maybe in a few months, or they could say no, and now they want to break up, right? There's like, there's potentially, there are lots of different outcomes. Uh, don't ever get hung up thinking that like, there's only one good outcome for a given situation. Even if something went wrong, there could have been potential other acceptable outcomes that you just missed as well. Always keep that in mind too. Um, when you say, uh, how much did you contribute to a situation? I'm just looking for actions that I did that I think reasonably could have led to, um, I'm looking for actions that I could have done that reasonably led to the outcome that happened that probably is avoidable. Um, so 
possibly having a sexual relationship maybe complicates things. Um, calling her a bitch on that one stream, I think, really triggered the f out of her. Um, maybe giving her perms at all to join the stream um, triggered the f out of her. Um, maybe having close friendships even with streamers, uh, influencers, I guess, could have triggered or kind of contributes to it, right? These are all like things, basically. Um, and then for external things, you've got like uh, my community response, you've got uh, other people that might be talking to the person, you've got other communities responding to things, um, and then you've got how they deal with things that is outside of your control. Um, this, is a, this is a huge thing. Uh, you, can't, uh, you cannot control other people as much as we might desire to. This is why I unhealthily separate from everybody because I don't like being out of control of people. <laughs> but um, yeah. Um, when you look at, uh, oh, so how much could I have reasonably foresaw to avoid such a situation and effect a different outcome? Sometimes, okay, so on part three, I think a lot of people will get caught up when they're evaluating bad situations and they'll get caught up on this part. Reasonably foresaw is really important. Sometimes people will just think, um, sometimes people will just think that I shouldn't have done this because this bad thing happened. And that can actually get you um, that can actually get you into a really, really, really big mind fuck state. So for instance, um, let's say that I'm driving my kid to school. Um, let's say that I was, let's say that I leave the house late and I drive my kid to school and on the way to school, a drunk driver T-bones the car, 90 miles an hour, unseeable, hits my car from the side, kills my child, right? It's possible to come out of that thinking like, fuck, like it was all my fault. Like I would left late and oh no, like, the actions that you took didn't lead to that outcome. And the idea that you could have reasonably foresaw that driving your child to school, even if you're late, unless you were driving recklessly, the idea that you could have reasonably foresaw that that outcome um, would have been linked to your action is really, really, really dumb. So uh, yeah, when, you, when you're trying to determine like how you could avoid things in the future, you have to stick to things that you can reasonably foresee, I meaning you've gotta go back in time and you've gotta be able to go back and do like a, an analysis of what's the information that you could have had available at the time and then what's the information that you could have had um, to make a better decision going forward. Uh, because it, because if we look at that thing where a lot of people blame themselves on catastrophic things, where they'll say like, oh yeah, like well what what should you do? I should I shouldn't have I just shouldn't have left that morning. I shouldn't have driven to school. I should like no come on. What are you you're gonna never drive your kid to school? That's retarded. Come on, fucking stupid. Um, it's foreseen, not foresaw. Foreseen. You could have foreseen. You could have foresaw. You could have foreseen. Sure. Um, yeah. But yeah. So that that's funny when I say reasonably um, foreseen. Um. So like things that uh, I can reasonably foresee to avoid said situation or affect a different outcome. Um, basically, we're looking at like, okay, well, t I think typically here, we're looking at the actions that we took uh, that were leading to this. And then we're seeing like, what actions could we have changed here? Uh, so for instance, so for call her a bitch, it could have been like, oh, uh, uh, been, more, um, been more polite slash uh, more explicit privately over conversational boundaries. Um, in terms of hooking up, it could be um, no sexual relationships with anyone ever coming on stream. It could be um, uh, giving people perms to join. It, don't Don't give perm, or what would it be? Audit who gets perms more strictly. Um, and then uh, for having close friendships with streamers or influencers, don't make streamers, influencers, friends. Um, one thing I will also say is that when you're trying to think of like actions that you can take to avoid things in the future, um, if, you're, if you're ever like actually writing stuff like this down, don't, um, don't write vague shit like this. It has to be like actionable stuff. If you're just writing dog shit, vague shit down in like a notebook, like be more careful in the future, like, okay, what the f I mean, you're not going to do anything, right? So like audit who gets perms more strictly is, that's a little vague. Maybe I would think about it, right? And then, um, so after we've done this, like, so I'm pretty sure that the goal would be like, if I look at all of these things, I, mean, I would have taken these actions instead of these actions. Um, and all of these are reasonable things that I could do, right? Uh, explicitly regulate boundaries, uh, no sexual relationship with anybody on stream ever, um, find a way to more strictly audit who gets perms to join channels, uh, don't make streamers or influences your friends. If I do all four of these things, it counters all of my contributions to the negative outcome. And I would hope that, um, I would hope that this would have avoided the actual outcome that we want to avoid, which is what happened, right? Which was this thing, right? That's the goal, how this all connects. Um, and then when you, um, when you, 
come to the end uh, of permanent behavior modification going forward. Uh, at this point, you have to look at like what you've got here, I think on what I would, I guess for this purpose would be for step three, and like what are behaviors that you would wanna make changes to going forward. So like being more polite or more explicit uh, privately over conversational boundaries, I don't really care to be more polite, I don't care about this. Um, more explicit private over conversational boundaries, maybe, uh, maybe more strict check-ins. Um, over boundaries. So these are things that from that situation I've tried to do when I have people on stream is I usually try to be pretty explicit about like, I, I've done this in the past too. Don't know if, I probably did this with Lev. I probably did actually. That would, I would have to go back and check. Um, but like, this is something like very, very strict check-ins, talking privately, are you okay if I do this? Are you okay if I do that, blah, blah, blah. That's like a really important thing. Um, no sexual relations with anyone ever coming on stream. I foresee this causing way more problems than not. Um, a couple that I can think of is that one, you can very quickly tell who I've had a sexual relationship with, which I think is inappropriate based on who I bring on stream. Um, and then two is, is that if I ever have a sexual relationship with any other influencer or talent or whatever, and now there are conversations or something going on my stream that they'd be relevant to, now they're banned from coming from my stream. They're basically punished for having a sexual relationship with me, which is stupid. Um, yeah, this is, so I, I feel like, um, and then, yeah, I, I, so I don't think this one is very realistic. So like, I would, we would just like X this one. Um, in terms of auditing who gets perms more strictly, um, I think all of the outcomes related to the conversations, I don't think I would take back any of those um, streams. I think they were just way too good. Uh, but, but the Mr. Girl Love and Alicia, all that stuff. Uh, I think the perms right now, I think are, they, they could deal with some improvement, but not related to a situation like this, I wouldn't say. Um, and then don't make streamers or influencers uh, friends. Um, no, I like having streamers and influencers as friends. I think I'm willing to accept that there are gonna be some bad outcomes, but I think it's fun to like hang out with these types of people. Um, I think it's also worth looking at external things here that you control for. Um, so in terms of community response, I can't really control how my community responds, but I can kind of guide it. So like one of the things that I've kind of implemented is I try to do this. I did this with Lycan. I think I did this with Wicked Supreme. Um, I've done this with a couple of people, but when people are getting a lot of hate threads, I'll be like, okay, hey, um, one thread. Do you guys want to criticize somebody? One thread for it. We're not gonna do the 52 million threads. I try to do like the three day rule for shitting on people. Um, so like for community response, it might be like more regulation of hate threads. That might be a thing, right? Oh, I did that with Pisco, right? If you disagree with Pisco and you should, cause sometimes Pisco is wrong. That doesn't mean he's like a fake lawyer or whatever. That's those types of attacks are not uh, needed. We don't need that. Um, in terms of evil whispers, uh, my thing is, um, just because of the person I am and because of the people that don't like me and everything else, um, I don't like, um, if, if I feel like somebody's being like turned against me or influenced against me, I usually just cut that person off completely because I don't have time to keep up with all the gossip or whatever. And if somebody wants to believe somebody else that I'm an evil person or rapist, or whatever, I just cut the person off. This isn't really a behavior change though. This is just like, I just do this. And I think that probably more or less happened. I think with Lav, once her and Mr. Girl started to kick off a lot, I'm like, this is dumb. Um, uh, audit who gets perms more, oh wait. Oh, other community responses. I can't really do anything about this. Um, because um, I, I just can't control external communities. Um, maybe bring this up to the person coming on stream. I've done that before. Uh, like, hey, are you sure you wanna have this conversation? Like there might be other people respond, but people just aren't even really aware of that. Um, and then for uh, the other person's reactions to other people, um, these are like two uh, really, really, really huge things that I changed when I evaluate other people is um, I no longer assume people are, um, are people, I no longer assume people have a strong sense of self-preservation. Um, And I limit, I limit certain types of like mental illness. So like for instance, I try not to, um, <laughs> assuming I figure out in advance, um, I try not to be friends, for instance, with people with BPD. I'll try to avoid these types of people because uh, it's just, it's too much. Even outside of, um, even outside of like rom romantic relationships or whatever, it's just not, it's just too much. I can't, you know. Um, yeah, but anyway. Uh, yeah, I feel like anytime I have like a major issue, I usually just delete these notepads. Sometimes I save them. Um, but anytime I, um, 
anytime I have like a big issue that goes on, I usually try to like do some sort of just like um, post-mortem to figure out like what happened. Like, okay, well, how did this up? Uh, you know, what, what did I do that, this up? What can I change going forward? And then I try to implement, um, I try to implement like changes in behavior going forward so that if there are outcomes that I don't want, that I can avoid these in the future, I guess. If it's something, yeah. <clears throat> Um, didn't you do the opposite with Farha? She was turned against you, and instead of cutting her off, you counter-turned her? Wait, it went. For what? Destiny, that sounds kind of retarded. How do you anticipate how people will respond if you don't assume they have some level of acting in their own interest? I feel like doing the meme, assume the worst, just f***s yourself more than it saves you. Um, I try to have, um, ugh, I just, I, now I'm trying to do a better understanding of, I try to have a better understanding of what I feel like is driving a person because my assumption there, I always assume there was a base level of like self-preservation, some level of like Machiavellianism, some level of like, I'll do what I need to, to survive. That is always, some, that's like so baked into my mind. I apply that to every person. Um, but like, so for instance, for Mr. Girl, I never would have conceived that somebody's narcissism could override their self-preservation, that somebody could feel so righteous on a certain cause and act with such uh, indignation that they would you know set themselves on fire you know i, I guess to, to to give light to their novel I, I never would have imagined that a person could do that i'd never yeah um and then even similarly with lav i would have never imagined um yeah i would have ne i would have never imagined that i was just inconceivable to me but but now I've, i just delete that now and now i try to have like a more sophisticated understanding of like okay well what do i think is like powering this person because i can't just assume that they've got like a high level of self-preservation um because that's I, that just doesn't work. I don't even know if that works with most people. I'm not sure. Um, uh, Melina, should talked you to her. She was mad, and you had some big combo with her to convince her that you are not what she told you were, or something like that. That was like a once in a lifetime. That was just a huge event. I'm not going to lose every single friend that Melina goes and shits on me to. I'm just saying, like in general, if like random people in the background are talking to you, uh, and you're like, oh, well, I heard this from this person. It's like, okay, if you heard that from that random person, then then I go believe that person, okay. Yeah, that's my feeling. Um, do you apply these to moms as well? Yeah. A highly regarded security forum in Israel called IDSF, which proposed multiple solutions to the conflict. Won't let me link it, but you can Google reimagining the conflict. Would be awesome to hear what you have to say. Maybe we'll think. Anyway, oh, sorry. So I asked me earlier, like, how do you, like, you keep rolling forward? There might be some, like, built-in emotional thing that I have that just lets me do it. But I feel like this process helps. Because hopefully after a thing goes bad, you come off the situation, uh, you reevaluate, and then, or you evaluate, and then you reassess your behaviors going forward, and you try to make changes going forward so that you're not, like, picking up a whole bunch of baggage every time you go through a bad situation. That's, that's just kind of, like, what I try to do, yeah. Um... More regulation of hate threads. Are you finally going to do something about those hate threads everyone see when they first Google my name? I believe in you, Crazy Fossil. How do you manage to be cordial with people who came for your career? Um, my original response is that I'm like a 10-year-old who's like needs a nap. Usually, it's very hard for me to stay mad at people for a long period of time. Sometimes this works out in my favor. Sometimes this probably works against me. Um, I think, I used to think that. One thing that I wonder might be a complicating factor is... Um, I wonder if the fact that I've continued to excel in my life and the fact that the other people tend to kind of fail, um, maybe that helps, I'm not sure. But actually, no, I don't think so. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I think you just, yeah, I'm not sure. I just don't think about it much. Um, Yeah, I don't know. I just don't think about them. I don't think about it. I don't think about it. <clears throat> um, uh oh, who joined? Oh no. It's me. Oh. 
What do you want? I was curious. Do you think um, do you think that you use too much like game theory with people? Like you try to assume that people are rational and utilize like game theory. I think that when people um, tend to be more emotional. I okay. Here's the thing that I think people make a big mistake on. Sometimes people will look at people as being irrational. Um, which is true, but irrational doesn't mean random. So even if somebody's irrational, I think their behavior is still predictable, or at least there's yes. like going to be a bound of predictability. So yeah, for sure. um, there are certain types of like things that I would have assumed. So for instance, like that self-preservation instinct that I no longer assume there might be others. And I'll find out in the future, I guess, if people break the mold on that, but I try to take into account yeah, people's emotions for sure. I think you have to take that into account for everything. So for instance, when I ask somebody like, or if somebody's like, oh, I really wanna be on stream. I was like, are you sure? And like, yeah, 100% I can handle it. It's like, I don't know. Like, even though you're saying it and logically you think so, like, I'm pretty sure if we do this, I think it's probably not gonna be right. Like I've had this conversation with a lot of people. So yeah, you have to obviously account for the different emotional responses as well. Yeah, no, for sure. Um, I just like, whenever I hear you like think and talk through people, I always wonder if you're doing too much like game theory. Well, I mean, game theory is just going to be the like the I guess like the type of analysis, but um, like you're gonna you're still going to be accounting for emotions in said game theory, right? Like, ah, uh, well, is it the problem with like like okay, maybe I'm not describing game theory properly. Maybe I'm understanding the thing wrong. Um, Chris Voss talks about like the negotiation strategies and how in a lot of like foreign policy they would always assume in like business negotiations or whatever that like everyone's being the most maximally rational and like rationality and like those sorts of things should be put forward most and emphasized most because that's what people tend to rely on for like major, major business decisions and any of these things. Yep. Whereas Chris Voss has been like, no, it's the opposite. Like th none of this is true. It's like all feelings. Like, it's all feelings all the time. Um, and so it's not, it's not, it's not unpredictable. It's predictable if you understand how people will react to emotions, which is like, they will move away from things that cause them to feel negatively and move towards things that make them feel good. By and large, unless that person seems to have some like have indomitable self-will or principle that makes them move opposite to what feels good. Yeah, I mean, like I would have to look at his analysis of that, but I mean, I would agree and I would disagree at the same time. I would agree when you're negotiating with people that people absolutely always act rational. And I think they do. I think people act super rational. Um, I think the problem is people think that rational means that you are logically trying to maximize whatever outcome you, not the other person, thinks is good. Uh, so for instance, when, um, when somebody acts like emotionally manipulative or toxic and other people are, you know, uh, basically giving it or enabling for their entire life, I think that the abusive person, I think they are acting super rational. Uh, they're taking the path of least resistance to get maximally everything they want. Uh, I think I would argue that that's a really rational behavior. I think they should do that. It makes sense. Um, that's why in order to break people out of those patterns, you've got to get rid of people that are enablers because they, they, as long as an enabler exists and assuming people People in the situation are acting rationally the person who is toxic is going to continue to take that path of least resistance yeah but but that yeah. one guy might argue with me and say maybe that's like semantics or like oh, well i would agree with you if you put it that way but when people talk about like rational choices they're really talking about people being like logic machines which is stupid i think yeah right yeah or like um because i think one of the biggest issues that even if you start hey don't don't bite uh when you're starting to think about uh sorry not you the dog <laughs> oh, i figured <laughs> when you're starting Okay. Uh, when you're starting to think about like emotions, I think where people can get really confused is like the masks, right? So people will, for example, uh, I think about myself. So when I was younger, I had really, really intense social anxiety, but I masked my social anxiety through like high levels of confidence and aloofness. And so people would assume that I wasn't anxious. They would assume that I was like distant and like uncaring, even though underneath. So a lot of my actions, for example, when I wouldn't go to a party, uh, that somebody invited me to most people if they're reading my motions on like the basic level are going to think she's not coming because she doesn't like us something probably to that effect if they're just reading like the mask but if they understood like the nuance of me stop um then they would understand that i'm not going to the party because i'm socially anxious uh -huh. does that make sense yeah and so that's yeah. where i think like the rationality gets confusing uh, with like emotions and stuff and like trying to understand people's like core i don't think it gets to, or i don't what can you give me an example because i don't think any of that is confusing mr. At all. Girl. What yeah a, mr okay. girl so like mr girl for example uh, or mr redacted or whatever you want to call him mm -hmm. um his fundamental need i think is to like be the hero and to like be the savior and be like the right one for sure um 
and he's like built like kind of this weird irrational like um kind of like principle about it where he believes like the more he fights against the world the more like justified he is as like some like i don't know dark warrior or something like fighting for justice and like a face full of like liars Uh um but i wouldn't say that he always presents himself in that way he like tries to present himself as somebody who's like super authentic and that's about it sure yeah i mean like part of associating with other humans is we don't have access to their minds so we have to you know create these sophisticated models of actions and words and meanings and uh everything else in order to figure out like what we really think is behind a person's actions but i mean like we do that as people and we're people have varying degrees of skill at it some are really good at it some are really bad at it just depends right yeah Mm -hmm. but i mean like again i think this is all just like part of the part of the I'm trying not to use like the coldest words in the universe, right? But like part of the analysis, right? When you're engaging with people. Yeah. Like if you're a girl yeah. and you meet a guy, I just, there was a girl I was arguing with this the other day. When you're a girl, she told me about this guy that she met and he's like, yeah, there's this guy. He seems like super cool. Uh, he told me that he like, you know, he works like uh, for a billionaire and they like, you know, they talk every day <laughs> and yeah. And I'm like, okay, well like, I'll, like I know this is bullshit. Um, right. And they're like, what do you mean? And it's like, this, why, what does this guy look like? What does he do for work? And like, why is he, no offense, but like, why is he talking to you? Like, what do you mean he works right underneath a billionaire? A billionaire every day? Um, so like, that's an example of like, people can present themselves as one ways, but I mean, like, obviously you have to evaluate like a totality of things to figure out a person is being truthful or not. And then you also build up like a history with people too. But that's why I also say like, you have to have like reasonable expectations. Like some people are really, 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 really good at mind fucking people are really good at lying or being deceitful. And ideally you develop some kind of strategy to protect against those people or, you know, ways of weeding those people out in the future, right? Yeah, no, for sure. So I guess like when you look at people in the future, how do you protect further against people who uh, like appear one way as like trustworthy or some sort of thing, um, but like aren't? Like how do people go about cultivating that within themselves? Uh, Cause it's super hard to sometimes see through people's- For people that are trustworthy? Or anything, like any sort of trait. If people like say you self-describe as I'm a son of a billionaire, blah, 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 but your life doesn't match up. How do people figure out like what is true about a person? Like what to actually, what is actually driving that person? How do they figure out a person's needs or wants enough to know reasonably enough how to predict that person? Um, it's, oh, Jesus. I guess, um, I'm not, I don't know, I'm not even sure if I'm, I don't know if I even practice this skill at all. Um, the way that I would always say it in the past is, um, usually I don't trust anybody until we've been through like a major situation. I'll say that. Um, and then usually, um, yeah, I'll, that, that's like the first thing I'll say is that like if there's a situation where somebody could have f-ed me over, um, then, and if they didn't, then that, like they get a lot of credit for that. Um, so that's a big thing. And then time is a big thing. Like, I think those are the two things that are really, really, really important to me. Um, but other than that, like, I don't even know how to evaluate trust or if you can. I think I've probably even told you this before where you or other people ask me their opinion about somebody. And usually what I'll say is like, oh, well, I've known this person for whatever. I've never heard anything bad about him, but I wouldn't vouch for him. Like, I don't know. I can't say they could be. I think I've said this line so many times. They could be insane and i just don't know i think i've said this to people um right i said yeah <laughs> yeah i said this, i say this to people that i hang out with they're like yeah you might be a f-ing lunatic i don't actually know but who knows we'll find out a bit or you'll kill me or you'll be chill um yeah i just i, I don't know how to um yeah in, in terms of long-term evaluation oh i guess like normal people probably do it with friends uh, like friends evaluate other people like so if they've been part of a friend group for a long time and everybody is like chill and everything in there then maybe yeah right or like they like prove Uh, There's a skill in DBT where it talks about how like the only way to prove the trustworthiness of somebody is to like give them small opportunities to prove trustworthiness. So like you find the evidence for the belief by like acting on the belief itself in small ways. Mm, Maybe. I I think that the the reason why I like the other strategy of like a situation where you could have me over is because... um, The way that I view this is, so what we're really trying to sort out is, we're not trying to find the difference between trustworthy people and 
evil, malicious people or crazy, fucking horrible people, right? That's easy, right? You just look at somebody and they do crazy, evil actions. Oh, then they're crazy evil. What we're really trying to figure out is how to discern trustworthy people from deceitful people trying to appear trustworthy. And the problem is, right. is that a lot of tests that people have, I think, for trustworthiness um, are going to be easily passed by a person trying to present themselves as trustworthy. That's why I don't know how much I believe in like little tests. Like, oh, like a friend asked this person the same thing that I talked to them about, and I'm going to see if they shit talk me. And it's like, well, if they're trying to present themselves, is trustworthy maybe they're not like they're gonna pass those tests the reason why i like the major ups thing is because if that person has a huge potential gain that they could have from you over and then they don't take that well now they're either setting you up for a really big long con or they're genuinely like a trustworthy person that's why i like it if the other person has an opportunity like if i'm trying to figure out like if you're like actually super trustworthy and i put like a ten dollar bill on my desk and walk away now i could be wrong <laughs> but i don't think you're gonna like or friendship by like trying to take ten dollars or whatever but if there was like right. a button that you could push in my room to irrevocably like transfer like five million dollars from like an investment account into like your bank account and then when you push that button you never have to see me again and you've got the opportunity to push that and then you don't do it well that says a lot more it's a lot different you know right so i guess two things number mm -hmm. one i feel like there's three types of untrustworthy person because you said there's a person who can like you over uh, who, there's a person who appears disingenuous and is, and there's a person who tries to appear genuine and is not. Um, but I feel like there's a much more common third, which most people fall into, which is they are really genuine until essentially some sort of emotional, like strain or pressure appears enough that causes them to have to like work against what they were trying to do. So like they were trying to be a good friend to you, but now they're between you and another friend. And fundamentally they're like more loyal to the the former friend than you so then they kind of f you over but it's not because they actually are disingenuous people holistically they're just a little bit like if push comes to shove they will pick certain things maybe that feels better and it depends on the person right like depends on what's going to make them choose friend a over friend b like it might be yeah, I mean, clout, I guess that's it might be possible i don't know if i would can i would have to consider that a lot um because I don't know if that. Or do you not consider that disingenuous? I, yeah, I don't know if I can say that disingenuous. It depends, right? Like if I was yeah. going to do something and I, you know, ask somebody to keep a secret, but then like the other person, like let's say I was like, don't tell anybody, but there's like this taco place down the street, and I actually steal like two hundred bucks in the register every night. But let's say that you're actually like super close friends with the owner, and you tell the owner, like, are you being lying or deceitful to me? I, I mean, like, kinda, but out of like a principle to loyalty to somebody else, you know? I, I don't know if I would consider the same thing. Yeah. Mm. I think yeah, it's a true. I think it's a reflection of other types of principles. Like if you're being more loyal to somebody else than me for what I would consider a, a lame principle, then I've just misjudged the person's character. That's not even necessarily deceitful. I've just like made a bad character evaluation, which is also hard to do in the streaming space too, but yeah. 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 Well, I mean, part of the issue that you're running into with like generalizability is the situation where somebody can f you over almost never occurs uh for more normal people i guess right. very rare mm -hmm. uh, in social circumstances uh freya get that you would need to for example uh fuck over a friend like this is why most this is why most normal people when they come onto stream it's like a it's like a mind f because there's just like like we said there's like these perverse incentives that exist that yeah, don't there's exist a lot a lot of different and types most of pressures, the yeah. maybe corporate i've heard corporate spaces that are really like cutthroat can be similar sure. in like the backstabby nature but most workplace i've never worked in a workplace that you're incentivized ever to backstab sure yeah that's probably true because we have like a lot of, i mean i mean that makes sense right like socially how would like humans are social creatures we need tribes and stuff to survive how the f would it make sense if you could with no consequences backstab the f out of everybody in your tribe constantly like these people are probably excluded like crazy you know yeah, mm -hmm. for sure. Freya, stop biting. Come here. Um, okay. That's the horse you're going to ride when you come down eventually. Base. That one right there. Sounds good. Nice. But, I'll make sure to bring Vosh with me. Okay, yeah, please do. He's got a big dick, so. Awesome. <laughs> okay. Okay, have fun. Just wanted to see your thoughts on that. Goodbye. Bye. Bye.